Welcome back, Gems. Join me as I interview the founder of Mawavi Basketball Fellowship, a nonprofit organization in the Volta region of Ghana. In this video, we discuss the importance of pouring into the youth of Ghana and why the diaspora needs to come back to the African continent. Let's get into the video. Welcome back, Gems. It's your girl, Niani, aka Mighty Intellectual, aka y'all already know the rest. Join me as we travel to and through the African continent as we learn more about the languages, the culture, and why so many African Americans are deciding to repatriate back to Africa. If that is of interest to you, then you need to keep watching. So today we have a very special guest you all see. I'm going to let him introduce himself now. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from in Ghana and what do you do? My name is Ali Kwami and I'm a youth development expert both in the classroom and outside the classroom. And I'm using the game of basketball to initiate some positive change in my community, Popwe, where I was born and raised. Then I'm currently there working as a teacher by profession, doing art and crafts and with the organization, Maubi Basketball Fellowship. Okay, can you say the name of the organization again? Yeah, the name of the organization is Maubi Basketball Fellowship, MBF. The MBF, Maubi Basketball, Basketball Fellowship. Fellowship. So y'all know I have been posting in my community tab and I've also posted in the descriptions of my YouTube videos. I am fundraising to create book bag packages and hygiene products for the students in his organization. So this will be a great way for you all to get to know who he is and what he's doing specifically with the kids before you all decide to donate. So we can just start with, you know, growing up in Volta region. What was that like for you? Yeah, you know, growing up in the Volta region. You gotta speak up a bit. <laughs> growing up in the Volta region, uh, it's okay as a uh, youth or as a kid in Ghana. Uh, Volta region is one of the renowned regions in Ghana. And so uh, I started my basic education in Ogwe. And further went on to live in Bando, still in the Volta region. And then another community, Aplau, still in the Volta region. And then back to Bando for my high school. And then I further to the university at Tamale, UDS. And then oh, so I'm you back, in Tamale? Yeah, and I'm back to my community again as a teacher living in the community. And uh, growing up in a community like that, uh, you must be able to overcome so many challenges to mm. be able to make up your way to where anybody will want to get. It's tough living in a community where there are limited opportunities and limited facilities to be able to become what you want to become. Mm. Personally, uh, growing up as a kid, all I wanted to become was an NBA player. Uh, I wanted, to play, yeah, I wanted to play, but uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't have the facilities. There was no basketball court in my community. Uh, there was no ball even to play. And all we had was a TV set to watch this game on TV. Back then it was GTV. That shows it on TV at 2 p.m. every afternoon. So we got a chance to watch basketball TV. Uh, basketball on TV. So that was where the passion began to rise up. And then unfortunately, there was no facility, there was no coach for me to play basketball. I am somebody who has an ambition to play the NBA, but unfortunately I didn't have the opportunity. So was the, the high school with the, that had the facility, was that in Volta? It, it, was, it, was, it was still oh, in Volta. Okay, okay. But the community that you lived in didn't It was have... Pandu, it was like, I was from Hawaii, but I uh -huh. came to school, high school in Pandu. So it was just a privilege for me and there was no coach. We had to struggle through the game. And then I got to the university and then I met a few friends. And because of my passion and my zeal and my determination, I was still interested in the game, but it's unfortunate. Uh, I have gotten to a level that I need to concentrate on my education and then achieve what I want to become. Luckily for me, I graduated mm -hmm. and then I came back <laughs> to the community. And then I realized the same problem that I was We're facing 15 there. years ago 
was in my community. Okay, wait, wait. Before we get into it, before we get into it, okay, I have some questions. It was basketball that you were trying to pursue. And you mentioned education because I have like African friends in the states, and their parents are like education first, no arts, no sports, education. So were your parents supporting you wanted to do basketball, or were they like education first? You can imagine. No, <laughs> there was no facility, so who would even support you? Yeah. Everyone thought I was going crazy. Uh -huh. Everyone thought these are no realistic dreams of a young kid in okay. my community. Because how would a young kid growing up in Hawaii want to play the NBA and you don't even have a facility in your community? Right, right, right. So I, I was supposed to give up. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to leave these dreams. I was supposed to let go of the sports. And in many parts of Ghana, don't have the values that can be able to make them have a positive mindset to be able to overcome the challenges of their adolescence. Because right. it is through these sports that every kid can be able to develop this. That while I was growing up, while I had a zeal to pursue this thing, the whole community was like against me. My parents, everyone, was, there was no facility. Everyone would think this is not a real dream. So but, where did it come from then? Because you're saying you had zeal, you were very, you know, passionate about it. So where does that come from? Is that something that could be taught to yeah. other kids? Like where did yours come from? The passion was from TV. Or like the perseverance, the will to want to do it. Even though people were saying, no, 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 where does that come from? It was from still the basketball game because I realized what a game was giving me as an individual. The game, each time I tried to play, even without having that good skill to play the NBA, but each time I play with my basic skill that I have, I'm able to have this self determination. I'm able to build the resilience. I'm able to build the strength to keep going through. So I didn't give up on this dream. I was always with the ball. Then here I am today inspiring the whole of my community with a game of basketball and doing a whole lot of good initiative through basketball in my community. So basketball gave you confidence? Basketball gave me everything. Wow, basketball okay, okay. took me out of my stress, my mess, my feeling of not being anybody. Then I, I got a purpose through basketball. Oh, I would talk like a lot and then I would, I would divert <laughs> my attention, you know, a lot. So I'll jump in when I need to. The passion for basketball, that came from watching it on TV? On TV. Okay. Also in the magazines that we're privileged to find. And okay. You know, basketball, I feel, is our culture. Mm -hmm. It's a black man culture. But you see soccer here, mostly. Yeah, but this this basketball is our game as well. It's uh -huh. a black man thing. We are the best. If you study basketball, you see uh -huh. it's the black men and us who play this game. There are so many talents there in Africa for people to discover. And so it is up to us to exhibit what we have for them to catch up. It is not just about the passion, it is about a whole lot of people that I believe are, have the potential in basketball in Africa here that the whole world does not have knowledge about. So uh, we're going to get into uh, your organization in a second, but I want to know, like, basketball, what do you think that can give children or anybody who's involved, like, what can that give you besides it just being a sport? Because some people listening may be like, oh, it's just a sport. They don't need a play. Okay. Like, what do you think it provides children? Yeah, okay, you see? He's ready there. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to tell y'all exactly what it is. Yeah, you see, basketball game uh, is when we talk about child development. Uh, the child needs certain values to be able to fit well into the society and then be able to succeed and then be a leader. So, yes, so the game of basketball is some kind of strategic game that can build all these virtues in a young kid, especially from the younger ages, from somewhere seven to somewhere 13 years, 14 years, is very good for their psycho motor development because the game itself is able to build some kind of flexibility in the kids. It's able to, let's leave the flexibility, the agility, but let's talk about the confidence it gives the younger kids. Yeah. 
Beside the confidence, the game, you must be able to persevere to be able to do the game of basketball. The trainings are sort of tough, so you need endurance. So if you can't endure, you can't train the game. But as much as you do this training, you become used to it. And you want to go more and more in doing these things. And all the kid needs to be able to develop this is perseverance, endurance, determination, being strong for yourself. So it's really basketball is not really basketball. Yes. It's really like a metaphor for life. If the if the child can be a part of a team and learn the leadership skills and perseverance, and they can also do that in the real world in life. That is how come you can do anything in this world. The human resource is the most important resource for us in Africa to develop, to be able to see the change we want to see. And for us to be able to develop this human resource, we must be able to focus on the younger ones. Because you know, the change we want to see in Africa, some of us believe the change can only be seen in the younger ones. Because so many of us now have been corrupted. All we want is like people, so many of us wanting to get rich quick and but what we need in Africa is some kind of unique skills. Yeah, unique skills, yeah. And then it is only through these virtues that the African kid can be able to develop these skills. And basketball is the instrument by which we can be able to do this things. And already it is evident we are doing it in the water region. Mm, about, okay. about 100 kids have the privilege to train for basketball every weekend. Well, let's let's get into that. You just brought us right into it. So he's going to tell us a little bit about his organization. So I want to know, how's your organization started? My organization was started in 2019. Mm -hmm. Like I was telling you, it came from the story I gave you earlier. Mm -hmm. I came back to my community realizing the same problem that persisted about 15 years ago growing up as a kid in my community still persists. Mm -hmm. The same problem I faced wanting to play basketball and never had opportunity. The lack of facility, the lack of force, the same problem persisted. So when I came, I realized that no, I have been able to uh, overcome some of these challenges of the world, of Africa. I have been able to pursue my education. I now have a job of my own. I have some little money to pay. So I should be able to give back. I just decided to do something that will be able to inspire the younger one to become better than I did. I came from that community and there's so many problems in the community are same problems I feel. So I realized, no, if now I have been able to achieve what I want to achieve, that I should be able to step up and then stand for the younger ones. Be strong for them, guide them through their life and be able to inspire them and be the mentor that they need. Uh, want to become the kind of people you want to become. So I established the organization with the purpose of empowering the youth to build some kind of positive values that will help them overcome the challenges of Africa. Because in Africa here we face a lot of challenges in Ghana and if you don't have some kind of unique virtues, you wouldn't be able to overcome. You end up on the street, yeah. yes, or you end up somewhere else that you wouldn't want to become. But yeah. the many kids in my community deserve better than I do. Yeah, and so if I have the opportunity to be where I am, I need to be able to inspire these kids. Yeah. So what we do is to inspire the youth through skill training, youth empowerment, basketball and skill training. So we are using the game of basketball to initiate some kind of feeling for skill acquisition among the younger both ones. Males and females. Our program is open up to both male and female, specifically below the ages of 18. Because our target is on the younger kids who we feel are countermount to change. Because all we are doing is to see some kind of change in Africa, in our communities. And so we believe if we can be able to change the mindset of these younger kids, if we can be able to help them build these skills that we can use to develop Africa, then we'll see the change we want to see. So what we do is that every week we train basketball, both male and female, and then intermittently we do skill training. And about the skill training, what we do is that we believe in People like you, Africans in the diaspora who come here, mm -hmm. we believe so many of you have some unique skills mm -hmm. that you need to bring back to us. Because many of us 
who even get a chance to travel out there, get there, build, <laughs> no, they, they build a skill, they build a profession, and then they refuse to come back here. Okay, so my question then is, why do you think so many, because uh, I've seen it too, like Ghanaians who go out and don't come back. Do you have a message for them who go out and don't come back? For yeah. Ghanians? We are doing our program <laughs> because of these people. Mm -hmm. Because we, they, you see, sometimes we feel they don't have an avenue to come back. Mm -hmm. So we are creating a platform for mm -hmm. them to come back to their communities. So the Ghanaians who go over and don't come back? Not just Ghanaians, Africans. Oh, in general. Because many people who left here have been sent there mm -hmm. so many years ago. Mm -hmm. They have to come back mm -hmm. and then understand that this is where they are coming from. They need to develop this place. Mm -hmm. Africans need to come back and develop their communities here. Mm -hmm. And we know they have a lot of unique skill out there. I've uh -huh. seen a lot of Africans in the diaspora, Ghanaians, who became good lawyers, good engineers, mm -hmm. mechanics, masons, mm -hmm. and they should come back and give back to us. We are willing. Mm -hmm. We have organized a whole bunch of kids who are willing to come and for them to come and inspire them mm -hmm. so that you know in Africa it's all about the grades that is the problem with our education system and let me just say too I think sometimes for the African Americans and people in the diaspora who are watching I think sometimes we may think we don't have any skills but we actually do so something you might not think is a skill may be very valuable to a child or to an adult here on the continent so just keep that in mind you do yes yes yeah so all these very potential and skillful people out there who are Africans. There is now a platform for them, Maori Basketball Fellowship, to come and inspire some kids. You know, I was telling you, our education system was designed for us to have grades and then complete the university without having a job. But in the real market, in the advanced nation, we all know that uh, well, before we can see real development, and that should be from the skill that a human resource in the community have and unfortunately in africa here yeah, we are being trained to go for the grades but maori basketball is changing the narratives mm -hmm. we are building skill among our kids we Can are talk a little bit more about yeah that? yeah like i was telling you we believe skill training and like what type of classes do y'all do with students okay our focus mm -hmm. our main focus mm -hmm. is on vocational technical Mm -hmm. Art and craft, African art mm -hmm. and craft, like the beads. So learning how to create the beads. The artwork, because these mm -hmm. skills don't need to die. Mm -hmm. These are the things that make us Africans. Mm -hmm. So they need to keep these unique skills, mm -hmm. like the goldsmiths. No, like what? Goldsmiths, people who do your jewelry, your wedding oh, rings. Okay, okay. <laughs> and yeah, we call them the goldsmiths. Okay. Most of them come from the rural communities like where we grew up. Mm. And so these skills must not die. Like in the art market, a yes. lot of those people come from the rural they, region. Yes, wow. they come from the water and they come from Africa. Wow. So these skills must still be imparted in the younger one. Mm. So we are advocating for skill training. Mm. Instead of going for the grades, we are encouraging the kids that hey. Beside the school, you should all try to acquire a skill. And yeah. that's why we invite people with diverse skills to come and train our kids. So, so far, we've done many skill training. We've been to the goldsmith, mm -hmm. we've been to the mechanics, mm -hmm. we've done much agriculture projects because mm -hmm. agriculture is one of the aspects we are trying to focus on when it comes to the skill training. Mm -hmm. The kids must be able to develop some unique skills for farming, mm -hmm. for we all rely on food. Mm -hmm. For survival, mm -hmm. so they need to know how to grow these particular things. Mm -hmm. For you know, many of us we eat a lot, but we don't know how we to. No, no, I'm I'm one of them. I don't know yeah, how to. So, grow. <laughs> so we need these kids to develop these skills. As uh -huh. well. So our skill training, the focus is on agriculture, vocational, technical, African art and craft, and also music and dance, because music and dance is part of the African culture. Yeah. And many of us are good dancers. Many of us are good musicians, but we lack the inspiration to do music. So we encourage these Africans in the diaspora, the Ghanaians out there who do these things, who have all these unique skills to come back. To come back. Okay. That is why we've opened this organization. That is how come we are trying to open a platform for them to come and do what they want to come. So we just we need volunteers. We need people to come on board, to come and support what we do because 
We are trying to develop Africa. We are trying to develop ourselves. So I hear people say often that like Ghanaian kids in the school, they aren't being taught how to critically think and think for themselves. And they're made to like, you know, agree with the elders. Do you think that's true in the Ghanaian community? And if you do, are y'all doing anything to change that with your program? thinking like all that you said yeah do you uh, think the kids are know how to like think for themselves or are they just trying to respect the adults our, our school system our education system don't give chance for us to really push think back okay. and then uh, do something for ourselves like i was telling you the system was designed for us to go in the for the grades, grades. The grades. Gotcha. so it is the skill training that gives you the ability to do the critical thinking yeah. or you want to design an artifact mm -hmm. like for instance i want to make a fabric design work so what should i design mm -hmm. okay fine i want to design chinami mm -hmm. so then i have to draw chinami okay then after i draw i need to cut with the scissors mm -hmm. that is critical thing okay if i cut what should i do should i sew okay i need to hand embroider mm -hmm. if i do hand embroider now it looks nice now this thing can be sold on a t-shirt okay or even a bag okay fine maybe maybe even on the wall so all those things are critical and it is only through skill training and in ghana skill training i love it so much because when you go under apprenticeship in africa it gives you the platform to be determined to be self-disciplined but this is not like the school that you go and you only read the notes and then you come back to the class and maybe you want to answer some questions yeah but this is something really, yeah they, they really challenge you you have to do this yeah, so can you do it can you sew a dress yeah you're under apprenticeship as a designer so can you sew a dress take this and sew so we are able to think critically so the skill thing skill training is the way for africa so they're skill getting like real life experience with the skill the, the, like they get to do it the ability to even go under apprenticeship or to even feel to learn a skill is like a, a major overcoming of a challenge in africa if you can be able to do that then you can be able to overcome every challenge in africa because it's not easy the, everyone's concentration is on the grades all they told you was to go in for the grades and the grades but now we all know the grades is not doing enough for us because the many problems we face in africa cannot be solved only with the grades because we need engineers to build cars we need people to build our roads and all these things cannot be found in the books mm -hmm. we must do something on the field and so we invite the chinese to come and do our road for us but why not invite our right. people to come and give us this unique skill right. train us so that we have the skill to do these things on our own right. so the african must be able to believe in themselves and do something for themselves so what do you let's say the next 10 to 20 years like what is the africa or what is the ghana you envision like what do you want to see happen in you can do ghana or you can do africa like what do you want to see change like is there anything specific with students or adults or businesses what do you want to see change yeah the, the message for africa's change is one it is first true unity we all must come together as one and we can be able to face a common purpose. But beside that, I believe and know that the change we want to see in Africa relies on the shoulders of the younger generation. Because for us, we are already corrupted. <laughs> yes, I know what I mean by that. We are already corrupted. The, the people at our side, like people on our level now, are already corrupted. If we can focus on the younger generation, our junior brothers, if we can be able to build some unique values in them, if we can build determination, self-belief, resilience, discipline in this younger generation, then these kids will be able to use these virtues to be able to manipulate the tough challenges that we face in Africa. That is the one message everybody must get clear. The message is one. That is the only way for Africa's development, the younger generation. Because the leaders have failed us. And we know 
and there is nothing we can do about that. What we can do is to focus on the oh, younger children. ones, Literally, the future leaders. That is what I believe. That's what I believe we as need well. To focus on the future you can't leaders. just depend on the people in power to fix it all for you. I think it's important for us to work on the individuals yes. and the children yes. in order to see the change that we want. Our advantage is that our advantage is that they are countermount to change. The younger ones can change. Mm -hmm. The change theory specify able that to mold their the younger or... ones can change. Mm -hmm. If we can build some set values, mm -hmm. if we can structure some new systems down for these kids, they will be able to change. Mm -hmm. And then we can mm -hmm. have some kind of new positive leaders who are going to control Africa and then bring the change we want to see. Mm -hmm. But if we can't focus on these younger ones, then we will go to the same path. Mm -hmm. We still go out there, speak much, and then we wouldn't have anything to live for because we are still going to go up people with the same mentality. Yeah. But if we can focus on the younger one to build some new virtues in them, the change we want to see in Africa will come. There will be a new dawn for Africa. And then Malvi and then Malvi Basketball Fellowship has set the pace for this. Mm -hmm. We have established an organization. And teaching that, them how to love themselves. I think that's really important. Yes, self-love. And how to think for themselves. So like Let's, we were talking about the skin bleaching. Yeah. So if they were to see something on social media, they wouldn't think, oh, I have to do this because this person is doing it. They would now be able to think for themselves. Yes. And love themselves enough to know that that's not yes. the right thing to do. Yes. Yeah. And that is it. That is what Maui Basketball Fellowship is about. Mm -hmm. Our organization has been set up to inspire the younger one to believe in themselves, to understand that, yeah, the problems in Africa can only be changed by us, not by ourselves yeah. we can change these problems. But in what way can we change this problem? In acquiring some kind of unique skills that will help us to be able to produce our own things and then manufacture stuff that can be able to solve our problems. And how can we do this? Through skill training. And even with all these things, if the African kid is not able to build the unique virtues, persistence, determination, self-discipline, endurance, perseverance, we can't be able to overcome any challenge in Africa. So the game of basketball is able to do all these things. And that is how come Maui Basketball Fellowship is using the basketball game to inspire the African kid to achieve all these things. That was so good. That was so good. Okay, well, can you tell them? Because now they've heard your story and they know why you're doing the basketball fellowship and what you're doing specifically. So tell them how um, they can contact you if they wanted to, and then also how they can help with the um, GoFundMe and everything. Okay. So uh, we need support in many ways. You know, we lack facilities, we lack mentorship and also we lack balls. So support should come in these diverse means. We believe some people should come to us as volunteers with their unique skill. That is how come we can be able to sustain the program. Mm -hmm. Because the main reason is for Africans in the diaspora to come with their unique skill to come and inspire this younger one. So we need support in form of volunteership mm -hmm. for people to come on board bring their unique skills on board and come and inspire these African kids to be what they want to become. And also, the other side for, you know, facilities, then we need some kind of funds to be able to acquire uh, the basketball facilities that we need for the kids in the community. And also, kids, that is the other side. When we say balls, it goes with the kids. They need basketball equipment and kids wears like shoes, like jerseys, mm -hmm. like verses to wear and play the game. That is another side of the support. Mm -hmm. uh, so the support should come in many ways. Yeah. We, the fellowship is seeking for support. And, uh, and where can they find you on social media? On social media, Instagram, Maui Basketball Fellowship, on YouTube, Maui Basketball Fellowship, and Facebook, Maui Basketball Oh, y'all have a YouTube channel. Oh, I got to subscribe. I didn't know y'all had a YouTube channel. And I'll, I'll put it somewhere on the screen and in the description box so y'all can support the organization. And then also remember, I'm doing the GoFundMe, so you can click the link in the description to hey. donate towards... Yeah, um, yes, a GoFundMe uh, to support education for the kids. 
we urge everyone to support this fundraise because uh, these kids, these many kids have a bright future. All they need is some kind of support, uh, some kind of motivation to be able to overcome these challenges. And so, yeah, they are willing, they are able, they have the persistence, they have the determination. All they need now is the support. So we urge everyone to support this fundraise so that uh, the kids can be motivated to do all these things they want to become. Do you have any final words before we finish? Yeah, my final words for everyone is that we believe in Africa. We believe in everyone who is supporting Africa. We believe in Africa having a new dawn. And so we believe that Africans in the diaspora should come back and give to the community, should come and support with their unique skills. There's a platform for them to come and give back whichever thing they have for the community. And I urge everyone to believe in the youth, because the youth are the future. The future we want to see in Africa relies on the younger generation. So if we can support the younger generation, we are going to see a new dawn for Africa. And so we urge everyone to support what we do, Malvi Basketball Fellowship, supporting kids, empowering the youth in Africa through basketball. Thank you to everyone. Thank you. Okay, y'all. So y'all heard it here from Ali, who is, you lead, right? The Mwabi Basketball Fellowship. So don't forget to go ahead and click the link in the description box to support the GoFundMe. If you made it this far, you are definitely family. So don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn on your notification bell. So you're the first to know when the next video drops. And I'll also be recording when we go to the Volta region to support his students. So definitely stay tuned and thank you. We'll see you on the next one.